Okay, this video is dedicated to the man that we call the prophet, Jeremiah Omoto Fufein. Thank you for joining me on this episode. We're going to dissect again the psychology of a man who has displayed the kind of behavior that he has in the past couple of months. My friend, my dear friend says to me, Uzo, this man is not important. Focus more time on other things. And I say no. Let me put it this way. There's nothing you can say to me to convince me that this man is not important. Let me put it this way. See, we often make the mistake of thinking that because something is negative or because it's bad, we just push it completely away. But no, everything that happens around us affords us an opportunity to learn for life. And it's from understanding these things that we're better equipped to go through life, to navigate life, to navigate the world, because we have a better understanding of what's happening around us, what people are doing, and we can interpret certain things that we see. We can know when something is beginning to look like it's dangerous. We can know when something is looking good. If we don't understand the mindset of the person that we're watching doing certain things, we won't know when we're falling into the wolf's mouth. So it's important that even negative things can teach us lots of lessons. What do you think would have happened to the world if we didn't have something like Judas? Sometimes you need the negative to, to be able to make things good. And that is the truth. If we understand an enigma like Jeremiah, he is an enigma. Look, I've said already in previous videos that I admire certain things about him. And you can be like, how can you admire anything about that man? And I am saying, I want you to go back and watch those videos. And I'm going to leave links in the description box under this video so that you can find those other videos and make sure to watch them. Particularly, I want you to pay attention to the one that talks about gaslighting and the psychology of something, something, something. Those will tell us. And then again, if I just watch all the videos in those links, those will tell you who we're dealing with and how understanding a person like this can help you to navigate life. Because what I find in our culture is that lots of us don't pay attention to psychology and Many people, my peers, are suffering a lot of things today because they just have no understanding of psychology. They don't look at the depths or the roots of behaviors. They just look at things on the surface. And we can't go through life like that because what you're seeing on the surface tells you what is happening inside. That is the true meaning of that life is spiritual. When we say life is spiritual, we don't even understand what it means that life is spiritual. You need to understand what is happening on the inside to be able to understand what is now manifesting on the outside. And that is the case with prophet, the prophet, Jeremiah. I always say the pastor, the prophet, because I know these people are not real pastors and they're not real prophets. So the prophet, Jeremiah, motto of Fufeni, you need to understand what's happening inside a mind like that to understand what you're seeing. And then that way you can know how to tackle it. Now let's go. This man, you think he is, he is important. He's, he's a big deal. This man could single-handedly have changed the fate and fortune of a state in a country like Nigeria where we have a painful economic situation. He could have provided lots of jobs for lots of people. And I'm sure he has, in fact, because have you heard about Messiland? I talked about it in the psychology of a man behaving like this. You need to go and listen to that one and you'll see that what he did with Messiland must have he couldn't have done it himself he must have given a lot of people work to do and with a man like that and with the kind of ingenuity that he has in creating he's very creative that person that person as you're seeing him has created lots of jobs for, for people and that is something that is worthy and if we have someone like that who was working hand in hand with a governor or a state and he was going to use those things to benefit the people rather than enriching himself alone the state will change. I am certain of that. Now, let's talk about the prophet, Jeremiah Omoto Fufuin. Let me Google a bit. He's 52 years old. Jeremiah was born on February 15, 1972. Jeremiah Omoto Fufuin is the founder and head prophet of Christ Mercy and Deliverance Ministry, Efron Delta State, Nigeria. And he founded the church on the 3rd of April, 2010. This is according to Wikipedia. Now, let me tell you about... Jeremiah. I really don't know. But just looking at him and listening to him, I can tell you that this man is a man from humble beginnings. And in a country like Nigeria, where even people of the middle class and even higher are having things difficult, a person like him would have had too much, too many struggles. And in that part of the country, we have people who take people to other countries for prostitution. We have people who are involved with uh, human trafficking and slavery. We have people who now this permeates the whole country we have people who are into drugs we have people who are into ritual killings we have people who are into yahoo yahoo and into 
for fraud, four one nine and fraud. But this guy watched the society, and instead of throwing himself into one of those things, he decided to go into religion. Religion is something that is very big in Nigeria. So he has already checked and known that I can succeed in this. That is telling you, first of all, that he's smart and that he has done a survey, kind of. We can say a market survey. Now, the people in Nigeria mostly are religious. They take decisions based on religious ideas and their own understanding of what religion is and they want somebody who brings action for them religion is not now the practice of a lifestyle for most people in nigeria religion is something that gives you something you go to it because you need something from it so they are generally looking for somebody who can provide action in the name of miracles um Miracle, what are they? They're, they're looking for miracles, they're looking for someone to solve their problems, and they're looking for someone who will get them to have, to own, to get money, um, to get riches, and to be able to survive in a tough country like Nigeria. And so, this man knows what to provide for these people. So, what does he do? He starts off by providing items so that they can have connection to someone who has powers. He presents himself as someone who has powers. and. You're going to now get items from someone who has powers. So what does he do? He has towels, he has shirts, he has perfume, he has toothbrushes, he has uh, keys, he has all sorts of things. And the thing is this, it's possible, it's quite possible that he may have started by, let me just buy this handkerchief, this t-shirt, and pray over them, and then tell these people that I've prayed over these things and they can use them to have some spiritual help and connections and then he realized why not just everything else so he's he has so many things that i'm very sure if this hadn't happened what is happening right now he would have ended up providing body cream uh body lotions wristwatches pillows because he even has lights lights that you can put in your house he would have provided curtains bed sheets beds television i'm sure he would have even tried to make his own phones uh, chairs, furniture, so that when you're eating, in, dining tables, uh, dishes, cutlery, so that when you're eating and when you're whatever part of life, whatever aspect of life that you're dealing with, tissue paper, whatever you're doing, because he will say, this is toothbrush to wash away spiritual mouth odor. This is soap, so you can wash away, I don't know what, what he called it. Uh, he even has ATM cards for people to buy, and I don't know what that is supposed to be, because um, you buy the ATM card, you have to pay for it, $20. He had all those things listed on his website. So maybe that will help you to attain financial independence, I don't know, because maybe when you're holding that, every time you have money, it's going to multiply your money, your income, I don't know what it is. He has keys, maybe keys to solve all your problems, because he had a whole video production where he showed us how he was in communication with God, and God gave him, handed him keys that he now started to sell to people. So, it's, the thing is, he would have provided everything, even the flowers that you will plant in your garden, I'm sure he would have gone as far as providing them, because sometimes we don't want to grow thorns, because those will bring bad energy. He would have given everything except for oxygen. There is nothing that he would have ended up not doing, and I'm very sure that if he's not taken care of right now, he will go ahead to produce more things. He will provide the wedding rings. He will make wedding rings that people will buy for their weddings so that their weddings will last forever. What else could he know? What, what would he not do? There is nothing that he would not do. He will provide you cameras so that if you're filming anything, it's going, you're going to, your business is going to prosper because it talks about business, whatever you want to do. If you have a business, if you're building, whatever you want. He will. In fact, with this man, Dangote, Dangote can hold a candle to him. In fact, as far as production and having products and list of products, Dangote, even right now, Dangote cannot hold a candle to him. I'm almost sure of that. You know what you're going to do? Make a list of things on the left and on the right. Put Dangote on the left or on the right, wherever. Put prophet, the prophet Jeremiah on the other side and make a list of the things that each of these men has out there in the market for sale. And come back and let us know who has more items. I'm almost certain that the prophet Jeremiah will beat Dangote hands down with this one because Dangote has what? Rice, salt, sugar... Uh, cement. What else does he have? But Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, Dangote is a baby where he is. So now, 
if this man hadn't been stopped, even bed sheets, he will provide bed sheets and beds for couples who are just getting married so that they are sure that every, their matrimonial home and their matrimonial bed is sanctified. And so let's, let's give that to him. He's understood, first of all, that let me provide things for these people they will buy. And then he suddenly realizes, hmm, they need all these other things. There is no way that they're going to be without towels. Everybody's going to use this. Everybody's going to use a toothbrush. Everybody's going to use this. And so why not just let them buy them from me? And that would have been all well and good. So do you see, this is a man who is productive. Google the meaning of productive. Let's Google. That is able to produce large amounts of goods, crops, or other commodity relating to or engage in the production of goods, crops, and other commodities. See, this is a very productive man. Let's, that's a positive that's a positive attribute and he knows that so he knows that these people are going to need all he would have even done hats he would have done scarves head ties he would have gone into ajira he would have gone into shoes so that wherever you're walking your feet will never lead you astray i am telling you this is a man that this man has business acumen the only problem with it though is that he's selling these things to people who are expecting that these things will give them will give them some spiritual connection with God and make things happen in their lives. And that is where the problem is. He has marketed these things and targeted them to gullible people who actually believe that they're going to have a touch from God when they purchase things from the man of God. Now that is strike number one. He has targeted gullible people. Strike number two is that he's presenting himself as a man of God. He could have just done this for a while, gotten it started, and he could have just said, you know what? I'm no longer in ministry. I'm no longer in the ministry of preaching. But, of course, greed, greed takes over. And with all the power that he was having with people worshipping him and bowing down to him, why would he do that? And so that is where the mistake number two is. He continued to do it because with all these things already out and people believing that he has powers, a lot of them would have just continued, even if he had stopped that ministry, a lot of them would have just continued purchasing things from him. He already had a, a website. Now, three, he presented himself as having these messages from God. Because even in his videos, you will see him saying, God told me, God told me, God told me. And you will see him doing Okay, first of all, let, let, let me continue. So he says, God told me, God told me that this is, this, is, this is going to. So when you come and take this, God is going to do that in your life. God is going to do that in your life. And so people are believing, these people are believing that. They're just buying his words. It sounds crazy when someone like me watches it. I look at it and I'm like, for goodness sake, how can anybody say these things? But you see, these people are already in a situation where they're watching him. And he has so many of these things. That's another thing. That's another thing that we have to give to him. See, there are so many. He comes with. He comes and he does the videos. He doesn't even just come and announce it in church or just announce it one time. He does videos and he puts them one after the other after the other. Why do you think I'm so obsessed with him now? Because I'm seeing these videos nonstop. One after the other, one after the other. And so people who are, whose minds are already positioned in seeking something, a connection with God through a man of God, because I've not been that kind of person who believes that I need to be like that. My Bible does not explain things to me in that way. And I had some experiences growing up that made me, I had experiences growing up where I had encounters, direct encounters where I had to do things by myself. And that developed a sort of, that developed an independence that allows me to know that, okay, I can actually have access to God when I have this problem to deal with this thing for me, right? Of course, I'm not saying that being in the presence of people who know better, I do have pastors that I respect, yes. But I'm not in the habit of just accepting somebody because they say that they are a man of God and they hear these things from God. What is it? The Bible tells us to study your, yourself, to study to show yourself approved. So the life that we're living in, we're living in the world. We cannot just accept just anybody who comes and says that they're a man of God. And because of that, we now go and say we shouldn't question. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense because the Bible requires us to be wise. You can't say because you, you don't want to question him because he's a man and we're going to accept and swallow everything he says. You know that Jim Jones of Diana got these people to all drink poison and die because he claimed that something, something he heard from God and something was going to happen. It's another human being. Even in the Bible, it tells you to trust no other. Put your faith on, in God. If you haven't 
paid attention to your Bible, you will fall for these things. And I can't blame a lot of these people because I think that you can imagine someone being born into something. You're born into something where your parents teach you, where your own parents teach you not to question the man. In fact, let's, let's not even talk about questioning the man of God. Where your own parents teach you not to question something because this is the way it's done. Because if it's the way it's done in the society and everybody's doing it, people get into the habit of this is what is done and we just do it. The same way that you brush your teeth every day and you have your bath every day. Hopefully, because you were taught that you should do that, is the same way that a lot of people are born into this mindset that we don't question a person who calls himself a pastor. We don't question a person that we call pastor. Now, let me not even go that far. Even your parents, a lot of us, our parents bring us up in a way where it's like you're not to question. You're told something, you just go along with it. And so how can we blame people if they've been born into something? This is the way that they've lived their lives. Don't ever forget, I keep telling you that the brain is a muscle. Whatever you have been exercising, however you've been exercising it, is the way that it tends to go and develop. Whatever you make it used to, to accepting is what it accepts. And as human beings, we're creatures of habit. We're not going to change easily even when we try to change even when we see something that looks odd if it's something that we've been so used to if, we, if we've been told that this is the way i don't think this lighting is good okay i think the lights the the heart has been blocking my light let me change this right so when we've been so used to accepting a way of life and a lifestyle a way of doing things it's hard for us to stop for a moment to think something is even when we think something is wrong, it's hard for us to stop for a moment to say, let me take time to calibrate. Let me take time to go over this thing and maybe I won't. And even when you think you shouldn't, you will go ahead. You know, because I can tell you right now that a woman who's been brought up to believe that she must do everything that her husband says is going to be a woman who, even when her life is at stake, after having two or three or four children, if the husband says... I want another child or another two children, maybe because they don't have a son. She's going to sit for a moment and think, but this is going to put my life at risk. But guess what? Because she's known only this all her life, that a woman has to go with what the husband says, she will still go ahead and put her life at risk to have another two, one or two children while praying that God should protect her and nothing should happen. Whereas you already have the notes from the doctors who have told you that this is going to put your life at risk but it's it's not easy to extract ourselves from a way of thinking if that's all we've known for all our lives and we're now adults and we've lived like that forever and so that's why these people are like this because even now that all these things have come to light i still see them online making comments and saying ah these people don't understand the people who are speaking against us speaking against the kingdom of god how can you say people are speaking against the kingdom of god by telling you that somebody is taking advantage of you and then those people are the ones that you're turning around to accuse and then you say their explanation is that we don't understand the things of the spirit these people have gotten into a mindset where they haven't stopped to take a moment to think and so he's able to carry them along like that so this is another thing so there is mind control there he notices it and he taps into it and then he continues and he continues to put out these videos and continues to always make himself put himself in front of you so the you're constantly of his videos and his messages and if you've already entered into that hypnotism i'll call it then you just keep on going. You don't have a moment to stop to think. And he brings product after product after product. So another thing is that he that he deals with what we call in sales and upsell. He deals with what we call in sale upsells. So like when he presents something to you, for instance, coming to meet him for prayers, you're going to have to go to the mountain to meet him for prayers and to get into that place you're going to have to pay to get in and even after getting in you're going to have to pay to buy something to wear before you see him there's a special thing that you have to buy maybe it's a t-shirt that he was talking about in one other video so like if he has a product so so now you're coming to, to and maybe you're going to even pay to see him i don't know about that so that means that there are three levels to pay for now if you're going for one thing because and then when we talk about items, there was one he was talking about where he said, you're going to have to come and get this, this card. When you're getting this card, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. And you have to buy this t-shirt. Buy this. Go and get this shirt. 
every person that come in there, you must put on the shirt. Where I'm standing right now, uh, you can see what is happening right now here. You know, this is a place that the Lord sent me. The Lord shown me at this place, he shown me that this place is a place that he used to bless people. You have to come, your name must be changed. You know why? When your name be changed, how are you going to change your name? You're going to go and get this card. This card, you're going to have them. Then, one is called testimony. One is called wealth. You now call your name. From today, my name is Omoto Fufuin. Testimony is my name. In the name of Jesus, you pray with this name. And the angels is going to now grant your your petition that you have now requested from God. Also, this is called favor. My name is Oboto Fufui. I am favored. Anyone called favor, that how God is good to now dwell it and God is good to now do it for you. Then this is called wealth. Then God is good to now, good to now give you, you're going to pray with you. My name is Oboto Fufui wealth. Go and get the shirt. Every person that come in there, you must put on the shirt before you go. Look at my back. You can see you get it. You have it. You must have it before you come to this place. So please get ready for this wonderful program. I'm waiting for you. We are going to wrestle. Enough is enough. Let them gather together in the COVID. T-shirt. He was wearing that t-shirt. So people who are going to go and do that, they're going to go through the page that he called panel. To get into panel for that card, you're going to first have to also buy the t-shirt. And we hear from other videos that you have to actually pay to get into that mountain. For instance, now that he said that he's pulled down all those things from his website and they're not for sale anymore, he says that people have to come to the mountain to get those things. And if we've now understood that people have to pay to people have to pay to get into that place that they call mountain, it's just another way of you're still selling those things. So he's got that covered. So this is a very calculating man. This guy, I'm telling you, this guy is smart. So now I want you to imagine if this guy had been working with any government. They say that Mercy Land is so beautiful. Imagine if this guy had been working with any government. He could have put that in place. All the people who would have worked there, all the people who would have created all those things, the swimming pools, the gyms, the hotel, they say they have a light, beautiful place. All those people, all that was labor. All those people were paid for working because they didn't work for free. And even if they worked for free, this is... That means that he's able to talk to people. You know, that's, that's I think he has charm. He's got the gift of, he's, he can talk. He's got the gift of God. Because even though he cannot, it's not everybody that he can, he can convince with those things. But remember these people are already under the spell of believing that they're dealing with a man of God, a man who has powers, who's able to perform miracles. And so in addition to that, he's, able to convince okay he's able so he's able to convince them to not only part with their money so imagine if someone like this was working in government all those things were built with the money that he got from people people who believe in his ministry who believe in the things that he says so if this man was working for was working for the state as a government official he'll be able to convince these people to bring enough money for them to create this thing they could have created a tourist center for that state so don't tell me again that there is nothing to learn from this man and even if those people did not work for, even if those people were ready to work for free, either he provided jobs for, and either he provided jobs for the laborers who worked and created all these things, or even if they were working for free because it's him, it still means the same thing. He would be able to get all those, gather all those resources and, and human capital together to make things work for that state. I am telling you that this guy is an asset. Take it or leave it. He is an asset. This is a very calculating man. I got carried away, I got excited and my voice was shrill. I've just remembered and I brought myself down to earth. You know that you cannot argue with any of these things that I've said so far. You know. <laughs> now, this man makes videos where he shows you himself calling on God and saying, Oh God, oh Lord my Father, your people need this, your people need that. So he shows you that he's calling on God on your behalf. He's crying unto God for, on, for you, for your own sake. So this is a person who is showing you that he's putting himself out, going out to cry for you. And after he's cried unto God, he gets an idea to bring you a spiritual, miraculous soap or miraculous toothbrush. Do you understand? So he's positioned himself as someone who is speaking on your behalf, 
crying out for you for your own good and bringing back goodies for you now let's not forget that they've already seen him perform miracles now let me give you a little bit of a backstory let me give you a little bit of a glimpse into some of how these miracles are performed it is not that there are no miracles there are miracles but you see people are looking for signs and wonders they want proof that somebody is able to perform miracles and that to them is proof that he has a connection to god and that he has power from god but let me now tell you that some of these miracles are done this way the people who are attending the church cannot even be in any doubt that their man can do miracles because they have cripples and blind people and deaf people who they've seen consistently for eight months 12 months one year two years coming to that compound around their church area they see them there all the time they see them there dressed you know begging looking for arms and these are people that they've seen over and over every sunday they go to church they see these people lining around that lining the whole area because they are blind deaf crippled lame walking on crutches and all that and then every sunday or some sunday some of these people come into the church and they are healed they are healed somebody that you have known for the past six months eight months 12 months one year two years you've been seeing this person consistently here you know this person uses crutches you know that this person does not walk you've never seen them walking and then you see that person come into your church and right in front of your very eyes your man of god or your prophet heals that person how can you not believe except that you don't know how it happened except that you don't know that some of these people have been lodged somewhere for the past two years or three years and they've been paying them because somebody has come out and confessed that this is what they did and even if that confession was not true because i know that people can even make up any stories people can actually make up stories because that may that's what that person's story may not be true but the fact is that this is something that happens they could have lodged them in a small hotel pay them because they know that what they're going to get in return is going to be worth the expense so i am paying this person to be an actor for two years and i just need you to stay quiet that is all i need you to do perhaps they're even the ones who will be doing the labeling of the products perhaps they are the ones who will be doing work behind the scenes you know so i am paying them and they are working they're working for me except that they have a double job so their other job now is to come out every sunday to line themselves around the church and then from time to time some of them are picked and brought into the church and healed healed and because people that have been attending that place have seen let me tell you because look the other day i was looking and i saw my own classmate i am a lawyer somebody who was trained as a lawyer so that's why you can see sometimes that you see even well-educated people in the midst of this people and they strongly believe that this person is a man of god because they have seen him perform miracles so when i saw it i sent it to my 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 friend a classmate of ours i was like can you see that do you see that even people who are supposed to know better can easily fall for this thing and we were like <laughs> So this is the way some this is the way some of these things happen so how can they now not believe that their prophet is a man of god because they have the proof to back it so you see this is someone who has done a proper feasibility study and knows puts everything together and now we're talking about someone who is also boastful prideful has an inferiority complex which now creates a superiority complex some of us cannot understand how someone can have an inferiority complex and a superiority complex at the same time the superiority complex comes from you feeling superior why would you feel superior even if i'm with someone who i know that i am better than in this way or that way for sure they are better than me in that other way or that other way because we all have our different strengths so if the moment you're not balanced this is a rule of life the moment you're not balanced in the way that you're seeing yourself and the next person because the law of life is that you should love your neighbor as yourself you should be your brother's keeper i keep on emphasizing this because guys all over the world in every culture even the laws of the states 
the constitutions everywhere, all the things that we're adjourned not to do, to not steal, to not do this, to not do that, to not do that, to not do that. All those things only came about. The law courts, all those things only came about because somebody is doing something to the other person that is oppressing them. So if without that, we wouldn't need to worry about law courts, constitution, anything at all. We wouldn't need to worry about anything in life at all. Anyway, I digress. So the bottom line is that you need to have an inferiority complex before you can end up having what we will call a superiority complex. Because you have a superiority complex because you are seeing yourself as above others. And what is it that makes you need, it, it comes from a need to see yourself as above others because you just can't feel comfortable that other people are as good as you are. And this is what makes him feel like if anybody speaks against me, rather than call them and speak to them like a child of God that I portray myself to be, I have to attack and I have to fight. Because you see how this whole thing, this whole imbroglio started because Damina, um, Pastor Damina was talking about the wrong things that a lot of Christian dom and a lot of religious leaders are doing because he did those things as well himself. You see, he didn't say I was never. He didn't say this is wrong, wrong, wrong without saying I also did this. So... Pastor Damina was talking about these things for a while. And then the day that he talked about Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah and his miracle soup and stuff like that, he's not the only person that he's talked about. He's talked about other people and he's mentioned names. But Mr. Jeremiah jumped out and went and made a video. He was so mad that he, he, was, he, he was looking at it like, why would he call my name? And this is going to take the food out of my mouth because people are going to look at this and then start doubting me. And he jumped. He jumped to make a video, a whole video on it. When I saw it, I was like, why would he make a video and start telling us that uh, Pastor Damina is wrong for judging? Are you the only person that he has mentioned? You are telling us that he's wrong for What is he judging? If you didn't do something wrong, nobody would have called your name in the first place. And that is what everybody is choosing to forget. Everybody who is saying that they are trying to pull down the church of God. If these people did not do anything wrong in the first place, why would anybody be talking? And unfortunately, you are calling this the church of God. You cannot be calling these people the church of God who are committing atrocities against people. These are rapists. These are thieves. These are people who steal other people, who take other people's belongings, take other people's money, take other people's spouses, take other people's everything psych people into giving them money and then they buy jackets and gucci, gucci shirts and cars and private jets how can you be calling these people the the church of god or the men of god and the reason why they certainly are not men of god is that i know in your mind you're thinking well of course they're human beings they can fall they're not blameless they're not infallible yes they're not but unfortunately a lot of these people got into this for the very fact that they know that the idea has been sold forever that you should not touch the man of god so knowing that they're not a man of god they went into this knowing that i can do a lot of things here and get away with them and nobody will say anything because if you talk people are going to shout and say touch not my anointed because i can tell you that i have my own family relative who we've always known to be a criminal but he goes and presents himself as a pastor and the people who don't know him people who don't know him down to his roots don't know that this is who he is but nobody out there is going to talk about him because they're going to be like touch not my anointed and you know some of these people some of these people these people that you think are so great men of god some of us actually know people that they have dealt with directly and almost ruined and crippled because of the things that they did to them directly 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 the top most people that you call men of god i'm using the ones in nigeria now and this doesn't happen only in Nigeria, by the way. I am in North America, and I know that this happens also in North America. A lot of people in North America, even in the UK, this happens everywhere. Right? So it's a different thing when we see a pastor or a man of God. We will know. We will know by his fruits. We will know by his demeanor. We will know that this person 
is a man who is dedicated and serving God and is trying to also teach us and to help us. We will know that person. And some days he will be a human being and he can make a mistake. We know that he's human. That is quite different from someone who enters there and carries this title and wears it because they want to cover themselves under the umbrella where they will not be touched and seen as the anointed of God. That's quite a different thing. And anyway, so this man was shouting, why is uh, Pastor Damina judging that? You should not judge. And then he carried the Bible and tried to show us, do not judge. And then he, but his attitude was very unchristian. It was very uncharitable. It was very, it was venomous. It was venomous. And he was shouting. And in so many different instances, we've seen this man shouting. We've seen him talking. And then he's boastful. That is nothing like a man of God. That is nothing like even a decent, normal, average man on the street. I'm a billionaire. I'm a billionaire. You have, you have billions. I'm not even a millionaire. Do you know who you are? Me talk to you. I can't talk to you. I'm a billionaire. How? What I want? The question I want to ask, like my classmates who I saw there, a person who is enlightened and exposed. How do you? But going to school doesn't mean that you're you're educated actually. Let's not forget that. But how do you see a human being who that is not even decent behavior? How do you talk like that? Why would you be shouting that you're a billionaire? Uh, so, so that means that we, we should now look at you not as a human being, but as a billionaire. And you feel that a billionaire should be given different treatment from a regular human being. There is no decency in that. There is no godliness in that. It just makes no sense. And that's not the only time that he... So that means that this is what he constantly does. So he's like, he's like a bully. He screams down on people. And... There was one where he was talking to that South African where he was saying, so you are, you are insulting me, you are insulting me, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to come to South Africa, and I'm going to deal with you, I'm going to show you, I'm going to put you where you belong, and I'm going to come in my private jet. I'm a billionaire. So you are no longer a human being. We will now refer to you as billionaire. So you now see billionaire as above a human being. That just goes to show that. That's why I say that there is something on the inside that creates an inferiority complex and now makes a person come out and have a superiority complex. You cannot have you cannot have real confidence and arrogance in the same person. No, you can't. Arrogance only comes about from people who lack confidence and they want to portray themselves as something special. And that is what we see here on display because he comes out and starts shouting. If you're going to South Africa to deal with him, you can get there by Virgin Atlantic, you can get there by Peace, you can get there by British Airways. Why do you, you can get there by South African Airlines? Why do you have to tell him that you're coming in your private jet? What difference does it make the, met the method by which you get there? It doesn't matter how you get there. You're going to South Africa, you're going to South Africa. What has that got to do? You're so angry and yet you remember to add that part that you're coming in your private jet. That is so embarrassing. And to make matters worse, you actually take the time to get someone to record you doing this. To record you showing anger, to record you showing how prideful you are, to record you showing how big and important you are. And then you don't have even the decency to hide this thing. You put it out there for all of us to see. That is someone who actually believes that he's, he's got a God complex. He believes that he's higher and somehow somewhat special and more important than other people like you can't you don't you can't make this thing up it's like it's out it's it's it's, it's just unbelievable it's right there for us to watch and see what's going on here it's sickening it's 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 embarrassing and so all these things together this is somebody who has the gift of talk this is somebody who makes plans who is thinking of enriching himself and does it on the heads of people who are looking for something else. And they can never stop. And that is why the money keeps coming. Because they will never get what they're looking for. Because they've bought this item. But they now need to buy the one that will take away their spiritual mouth odor. Then they now need to buy the one that they can use to wash themselves so that they can be spiritually clean. Then they now need to buy the one that they will need to put in their wallets so that they can keep on... Um, they can do well financially. They now need to buy the one that they will hold so that anywhere they go, the doors are unlocked for them. They now need to buy keys. It's, the list is endless. So they're going to keep on buying, 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 throwing their money at you. And I say again, there is nothing wrong with if you had set up your, his own business and had the people directed to go and buy those things. But where the problem is, is with lying in the name of God, Making them now 
have no choice but to buy your own towels instead of going to buy from somewhere else to buy your own toothbrush instead of going to buy from somewhere else so it's like it's an endless spin of money coming to him so this is someone who has targeted the gullible so that's that's that is manipulating and mind bending and then now this man after he finds himself in a tough situation where it's like he's going to be exposed for who he is with items that don't actually do what they say that they will do for instance the water that he said will wash away things and will do this and do that after he's been, oh before i forget when i talked about the miracles i should have talked about somebody is going to say how do we know that he can't do miracles we haven't seen any of the prominent celebrities who have tried to get healing from these churches that actually got the healing. There is no one that we know who was taken there. For instance, for prophet, the prophet Jeremiah, we know that Claire Mohameze, the well-known, very talented Nollywood actor, Nigerian actor, went to his church before the prophet Jeremiah became popular. Well, I, I'm sure that Claire Mohameze had heard about him because even at that visit, that church was crowded and this church has thousands of people. Just go and see it online. So Claire Mohameze had heard about this prophet Jeremiah who performs miracles because people had talked about those miracles that they had seen him perform. And so Claire Mohameze went there and this was televised. I don't even understand. So he got them in the church to film this thing, to record it and to put it out there. He didn't heal him. He instead gave him 8 million naira at that time. And he gave him that money to travel abroad for treatment. But he put it out there and just for it to show that if this celebrity could come to this church, and I'm sure that that's part of what helps this church to grow. If a celebrity could come to this church, then what are we talking about? But the part that we didn't pay attention to is the fact that this man had been healing cripples and other people with sicknesses and all that. But when somebody who we actually know had a real sickness went there and everybody knew about it, this sickness was not healed. But we conveniently forget that because maybe that man didn't have enough faith. <laughs> now I've even forgotten what I was saying. Um... Anyways, oh yeah, so so what I was saying was when when it now looked like he was going to be exposed to be a fraud, he now makes a U-turn and comes and starts to say that those items aren't for sale. Why are you taking those items off from sale from sale from sale? Why are you taking those items off from being sold? I really don't know what he was thinking. I don't know. Because we already know that you were selling them. So are we going to forget that? We're not going to forget that. No matter what happens, even in 20 years, we're going to know that you were selling those items. So you've taken them off and then you tell people that nobody should sell those items. Maybe he's thinking that nobody should get those items and then go and sell them. Or he's trying to say selling them is wrong. But you never came and said, said he said, because these items, these spiritual items are not for sale. That was his statement. So, but he never turned around to, apologize for having done that so it means that we can take it that he doesn't see that there's anything wrong with what he did by selling those items and then he said i forgive i forgive you because i'm a man of god i forgive you and then he made a whole speech and a whole video about forgiveness that he's forgiving because he's a man of god he's forgiving because ah no he just took that uh, action of you know because he got he got angry because you know we're human this is uh, that what I forgive oh I forgive there's no trouble there's no problem with anybody everybody just forget about it you want us to forget about it you just want us to just forget about it so, you know this is gaslighting this is gas gaslighting at its finest you've done something wrong you don't accept or acknowledge that you did anything wrong and now your turning around is not because oh I'm going to be exposed or anything you're trying to make us believe that it's because you are uh, a man of God so because you are a good person so he's forgiving because he's a good person this is really strange because what it tells you is you need to look into the psychology of a person like this if he can do this publicly where we are all seeing it where it's like he doesn't even believe that he believes that he can fool all of us what kind of person 
believes that he can fool everybody online like that. It tells you that he's now left the realm of reality. What does that tell you? He's not operating in reality. And that's why you hear that we deal with spirit, we deal with principalities and powers. You don't understand this thing, that things happen in the spirit before they manifest in the real life, before they manifest physically. This man is not operating in on the realm of what we have here. He's showing you what is going on inside him. And what is going on inside him is that he's not even in reality. He can't even deal with what is real, what is what actually happens. He deals with what he makes up in his mind. So what does that tell you? What does it tell you? Is his mind a healthy place? Do you think that that mind is healthy? If it believes that what it conjures up is what the rest of us are going to believe in. He believes that what he conjures up, it's like, is this witchcraft or what? He really believes that what he makes up in his mind is what is going to be our reality you make up the fact that you are forgiving because you're a man of God you are not saying that you're forgiving for any other reason because you don't want to go to court because it's too much trouble because you've seen something wrong you've done because you're going to be exposed you actually want us to believe that it is because you're a good person you think that we're going to buy that he's not operating in the real world so there's some sort of psych something going on there and I can tell you that a lot of the behaviors that have been exhibited now will show you that you can begin to consider psych you can begin to consider uh, there you can begin to with the boastfulness with the arrogance with the uh, with the standing on other people's heads to go no matter what happens with the lack of understanding with the lack of empathy with the lack of learning lessons nothing makes any you can just begin to consider sociopathy and psychopathy. Let me just, let me Google those two words, just in case, so that we can, who is a psychopath? Psychopathy or psychopathic personality is a personality constructed by impaired empathy and remorse, bold, this inhibited egocentric traits masked by superficial charm and the outward appearance of apparent normalcy. I'll tell you guys, honestly, I have never in my life googled the meaning or description of the word psychopathy. I just did that during this recording, you know, and I did that for your own sake so that you can hear it read out. And I want you to go, you can go and Google that by yourself as well. What are the characteristics of a psychopath? Superficial charm, high intelligence, poor judgment, failure to learn from experience, pathological egocentricity, an incapacity for love, lack of remorse or shame, impulsivity, grandiose self sense of self-worth, pathological lying, manipulative behavior, poor whatever. It's just, it's too much. It continues there. Do I need to tell you about sociopathy? No, I'm not going to bother because I already did that in the other video. And you can find all those videos in the description box under this. I think I've said enough. I've said, I've said enough for you too. That's why I had to dedicate this video to him, to analyzing his behavior so that you can, you can get a deeper look. And let's just stop looking at things on the surface. Now, the final point that I'm making here is that this man should not be this this thing should not happen and brew over without him or people that care about him or in a sinner society in sinner climbs a person like this would need will be going to therapy because there there is there are issues here there are issues for someone who will behave like this seriously if he cares about himself you know and not to even talk of the person that he's married to it's, it's, that's a very flashy woman in everything that she does, but she cannot speak, she can't make up a whole a sentence of proper English. She can't. There is a reason why he's drawn to that. He wants something very flashy. And this is to make him feel like, I've got something. So that when people look at her, without even talking to her, without knowing that she can't speak properly, without knowing that she, I don't know, just, just people looking at her. 
the last time in fact the first time that i ever saw them at that time i didn't know who they were that was maybe early in the year or last year i didn't know who these people were i just thought that it was a, a, a prophet gifting his wife in front of the church and he gave her 55 million naira and i was like where did he get the money from because i want you to ask yourself that where did he get the money for all, all the things that he does all his money his private jets if he has one and all the billions he's talking about where did he actually get all that money from he got it from these people so you can see how much money he was able to get from these people because of his ability to talk. Very hardworking man. So you can imagine what he would have done for a state. This is a guy, I'm repeating again, this is a guy that can be an asset. He can be used in a positive way. But if you're going to think about using him, you must not forget you have to take him for a psych evaluation. He's got it, only that he uses it to manipulate for his own good. For his own in his own interest he's got it but he uses it to manipulate in his own interest and at the expense of other people so if you're going to use him for anything you have to watch him closely because you will not be spared everything is in his own interest he's not safe is the bottom line and with that i will close this class today tell me what you think in the comments oh this and before I forget now, and before I forget, before I close, this is a new channel. Many people don't know about the existence of this channel. All that we're dedicated to here is talking about things that will help us to change our mindsets and the wrongful ideas that we were taught growing up because of our culture, because of the things that we value and place priority on. So please consider subscribing, like this video, and leave us a small comment because whatever comment you leave us will help us. It helps for more people to see our videos online. And also please consider sharing it so that other people can come onto our channel. And then I want you to please look at our list of uh, topics and conversations you will learn you will learn a lot from each one of them we're not presenting that we know everything but the things that we talk about we do know we do know for sure i can tell you about my background some other time and just know that we're poised to help all of us because everybody who comes across these things and learns these things can teach their children your children are going to meet our children tomorrow so we just want a better life for us yes we cannot save the world but we can have a little ripple effect in our sphere of influence yeah so thank you for being with me through this video remember to like again share subscribe and watch our videos bless you bless you and i wish you conscious empowerment because that is what we're here for